Welcome to another episode of Archie Fantasies Plays Borrow Hill. Ooh. It's a folk horror game, which if you follow me at all, folk horror is my current obsession right now. Uh, blends very nicely into paranormal archaeology and crosses over quite nicely into the world of archaeo gaming now. I have already played the game through uh, from start to finish, and I was live streaming it. I live streamed, I think, the first. Ooh, screechy thing. I hate that screech. I did live stream my first, I think, hour and a half of me playing it, but um, the game's got a frustration factor for me, so I didn't finish live streaming the whole thing. I have finished the game, and I now want to play through it in a way. Where I can have an intelligent conversation with the audience while I click upon the screen. This is a click-through game. Um, everything's done with a mouse click. Personally, I'm not a fan of that particular way of moving through a game. Because it gets frustrating movement style, but whatever. That's just me critiquing the game mechanics, which are not the actual focus of this discussion. What we are going to be looking at as we play through this is we're going to be looking at the mythology built around Barrow Hill, the use of folk horror to create the ambiance of this game, and just the the game's overall use. It does... the game was sold to me as an archaeology based game. You'll see why. <laughs> Uh, there is a trial involved, I will say that. Uh, we do, at one point, use it for what it is actually supposed to be used for, not Brick Lane. Um, but yeah, Barrow Hill itself, uh, it's not a real, quote-unquote, real-world location. Barrow Hill is actually based on several different um, megalithic locations throughout uh, Cornwall, UK, I think it said. No. I lost my note. England. UK, England. Same thing, right? I live in America. Don't come for me. Uh, but yeah, so the the Barrow Hill that we will be encountering in this game is itself not a real physical location, but it is heavily based on other real world locations uh, throughout Cornwall, England. And, yeah, oh, and to let you guys know, this is Barrow Hill, Curse of the Ancient Circle. There is a sequel game. I will be playing it, and probably, probably not in the next week or so, but I will be playing it in the future, and probably doing another style video like this, where I will play the game, get the frustration out of the way, and then I can walk you guys through it quite nicely. Yes, so. Um... There's not a lot of characters in this game, so it should be kind of fun. But anyway, let's get started with Barrow Hill. If I say it in an English accent, Barrow Hill, that that wasn't an English accent either. Don't come for me for that. All right, new game. I want you all to pay attention to the new game cutscene because I can't do anything about it. You have to watch it. your local radio station on top of the world. It's exactly 15 minutes to 8 and this is Emma Harry. I'll be with you from now to late past the witching hour and I'm inviting you to stay right here with me. It's 15 degrees outside tonight up here on Barrow Hill. The weatherman is trying to spoil it for us. He says we may be in some rain tonight, but from where I'm sitting it looks like it will pass us by. This is Emma Harry on top of the world tonight, not just any night, 
for those who don't know, is the Autumn Equinox. An important date in the pagan calendar. And you've got 12 hours of darkness ahead. So let's celebrate. Like Alice, we're off down the rabbit hole. I've got four in a row for you, coming up right here on the... Alright, so we turn it down a little bit. I wanted you to be able to hear Emma. I hope you all did. Important things that we need to know right off the bat. It is the summer equinox, which is the oh wait, no, it's the vernal equinox, my bad. Because you got twelve hours of darkness. Crap, I don't even remember. Anyway, it's one of the equinoxes. Equinox means equal. I don't know what Nox means. Darkness. Anyway, today in game, we have an equal number of daylight hours as we do nighttime hours. So there's 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. Now, we are officially beginning the game. This is our car. Hello, car. How are you? <coughs> We do have all these fun standing stones. Personally, as a gamer, I really enjoy this art aesthetic. I don't know if they took pictures and just, like, added filters or what, but I really like it. I think it's a cool, neat effect. So this is the road that we had been driving in on. And as you can see, we can't leave. But anyway. Our car apparently has stopped working, and yeah, so this is how we move through the game. This is how we see if there are things worth seeing. There's some mushrooms. Hi, mushrooms. What's up? All right, so we've got this road. We got this cool structure here. Last time I played this for the first time I mentioned that this structure is, uh, I said it looked like a spring house. Um, cats being a butthead, hang on. I said it looked like a spring house and we do have similar structures throughout uh, the New England and what coast am I on? East coast? Yeah. Uh, going up north. That's because we had a lot of people settle here from England and the way. And of course they built their structures the same way here that they built them there. All right, we got a bit of a jogging path. We can't go any further here. I guess I never really noticed how much they, like, forced the issue of how you can walk in this game. Uh, this game does unlock depending on different things. So there are areas where we are the button currently, but we'll open up as we walk. I'm kind of just giving you guys a scenic tour. Wait, did I get turned around? God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I get turned around really easy in these games. Right, let's try this again. There we go. Alright, here's our gas station. A semblance of life. Somebody there. Uh, let's just go down the path. What all? Oh, that's right, I can't. Alright. So, we are at the Barrow Hill Service Station, Petrol Snacks and Motel. I guess that was in case you couldn't see it from back there. We got us a broken down playground, a running car, hissing cats. 
That's that's not in the game, that's my actual cats. I got this mailbox over yawn. Now, what this game does do is the game does use game artifacts to get you to learn the story that's going on. So we've got, Dear Marianne, I hope you are well, and the clothes shop is busy, busy, busy. I will be needing a new nighty soon for the chilly weather nights. Winter nights, sorry. The autumn equinox really sneaked... It is autumn. Ha ha ha. Really sneaked up on me this year. Thank goodness for St. Annika. Oh, of all the cheek, have you seen the stamp on this card? It's one of those hideous communication masts for the mobile phone signals. It's rather ironic given that Barrow Hill has one such monstrosity... Uh, hidden behind the service station. I wish the thing would get rusty and fall down. Chat to you again. Yours, Elsie. So, everything in this game has some kind of information in it, so it's worth paying attention to. But, thanks, Elsie. Except for this. We don't care when the, what, when the mail gets picked up, because it's not 3.15pm. Alright. Ah! This is why I hate these games. It's not intuitive. Alright, we got three motel rooms. Keypad. Somebody hung up some... <clears throat> you know, I don't think I ever found the um, wind chimes. A blackberry. A gooseberry. Apple and pear. Has anybody ever had gooseberry pop? Is it any good? Car is running. This usually means we can interact with it at some point. So we'll see. All right. Kind of giving you guys a tour again. Tour. Also, there's a lot of things that, well, I know now. It lets you look at things that you can't necessarily, you know, in case you're going to wash your hands. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, anyway. I also appreciate that there's a fan. Ooh, matches! I didn't find those last time. I guess we're using the toilets? The toilets? Uh, I, I take you into the ladies' room, but it is literally identical. I guess it won't hurt. Oh yeah, there's this cool mirror. You know. In case you want to watch people poop. Feeding seagulls harms them and us. Antiquities, adventure land. Is that a car motor? What am I looking at? And freshly cut sandwiches. Is, is there, like, is that a thing? Only on 14 TV. Most ancient live. That might be a real place. I'm not familiar with my castles. I don't know why we needed to see that. Wait, go back. I want to look at the flowers. I want to look at the dead and dying flowers. This is where I found the matches last time, so it does seem to change. Oh no! What is... 
this is our inventory. We actually have like I think three different sections, four, four different sections to the inventory. Yeah. This actually, we'll discuss this in a minute later, but. Y'all know, I've already got problems with this. Anyway, this is our Cornish Fungi Kingdom book. Identifying and collecting. Some fungi can only be identified with a microscope. Warning, many safe mushrooms are very similar to deadly poisonous varieties. Honey fungus, amethyst deceiver. Retains color when cooked but lacks flavor. Huh. Parasols. Eat within hours of picking. Or what? Now, something to understand as we go through this. Uh, these edible mushrooms do not in any way represent edible mushrooms in, well, A, reality, and B, North America. We have many varieties that are deadly poisonous to ed to, uh, they look like edibles. They are not. Poisonous. Slimy cap can cause digestive upset. Wait, if it's a false death cap, what difference does it make? It's still, it's still, like, deadly. Deadly poisonous. Destroy. I just love the name of that. And yes, the Dryad Slumber, everybody's favorite trippy mushroom. The Stinking Parasol <laughs> resembles a poisonous variety, unpleasant spell. Oh, that's it. Alright, so that's all we get to learn about mushrooms. Right. Where did you come from? <laughs> I can see you out there. What was meant to be honest, remembered, has fallen into ignorance. Okay. Why? Why? What's gonna happen? I still haven't figured out why we keep looking at this vacuum cleaner, but I swear to God, I wanted it to be an active, an interactive object. Anyway. Um, we're going to let Bill have his breakdown in there. So this is Borrow Hill Circle, a presentation put on by class 3D. Ha ha ha. Anyway, this is a depiction of the various stones of the borrow that we are going to be investigating. It's not a spoiler because the name of the damn game is Borrow Hill. Anyway. I'm going to leave this up here for a minute, let you guys read over it. This is the class's presentation on the borrow. Hi, Bobby. You may notice some similarities as we go through the literature on the borrow hill in game with, like I said, real world lo locations that some of you may be aware of uh, in Cornwall. Um, and there is reason for that is because they drew a lot of the information that they wanted for this game from real world locations. That's a, a tried and true tactic uh, for storytelling. There's the borrow itself and the seven standing stones. Another drawing of the borrow. I don't know <laughs> sore point junior high school. I don't know what a junior high a junior school is. I'm guessing that's a grade school. It's a close up of one of the stones. The stones really do look cool. There's some more information about Cornish megaliths. This one's neat because it mentions the beaker people. The beaker folk are real. Uh, 
so yeah the the beaker people are named for the archaeological remains that are found uh it's very common or you know to name a group after an area like uh neanderthals neanderthals are called that because they were found in a cave in neanderthal um the beaker folk are named that way yeah because the beakers they usually left with burials they had some very intricate pottery um so that's why they're called that and this is just kind of helping you just kind of tie it's just a sneaky sneaky way of a giving you some information on a real world uh archaeological period that being that of the beaker folk and also helping you set the stage for how old the barrow at barrow hill is supposed to be so Again, not going to read everything for you. I hope you had enough time to read with that. These are the seven different standing stones up on the top of... I want to call it Beaker Hill, but that's not right. Uh, Barrow Hill. Now, each one of the stones, interestingly, has a name. And you'll notice... But all but one of them has what to me sounds like a name name. Obviously, no one names their kid Hammerstone. If you did, more power to you. It's a name to grow up with. Yeah, he's, I, I don't, I don't know what he's going on about. Anyway. It will be me, It's coming out of the darkness. It's all right, Bill. We'll get to you. Anyway, uh, we got some nice, uh, postcards. I do like the postcards. Now, the stone altar and Barrow Hill, as we will find, are two separate locations on the same site. There's Annika's well. And ancient Cornwall. These are nice because actually playing through this the second time, these are all of the. Uh, I was like, why do we have postcards? Each one of these is one of the important locations in the game. So that's kind of interesting. Pagan and Wiccan Magic. Written by Elsie Prestige. <sighs> Alright, so again, I'm not going to read this for you, uh, but there's some fun information here. We can learn some stuff about uh, neo-paganism, basically. <laughs> And then there's a backside. And the backside is important because the autumn equinox, celebrated in September. This is the most mysterious of harvest festivals. Night and day are the exact same length and welcome in the winter and the end of the yearly cycle. Celtic gods walk among us, observing and receiving gifts from the land. And then the mystical mushroom dryad slumber, remember we saw that up here in our book, uh, appears throughout autumn. Admired by the fairies, they renew their magical powers through harvest and celebration. However, the mushroom is deadly to man. Apply caution. Where am I applying caution? Okay. There, I mean, this is all relatively accurate if you, uh, if you are a practicing pagan or, you know, familiar with it. None of this will be new to you. Uh. Okay, so the ancient kings being awoken is. He's not doing well. 
Anyway, these are the myths and legends. Again, not going to read this for you, but you'll notice that the uh, story of Magrid will read a little familiarly to you. And I think that's also where the uh, king thing comes from. Oh, no, it's Balin who... At the time he would awake and his ethereal body would rise from the earth to defend his kingdom. I mean, that's clearly a Arthurian legend callback. Or the other way around. Maybe Arthurian legend calls back to this. I don't know if Balin's real. I didn't look it up. I don't know if Magrid is real. Didn't look him up either. Uh, Magrid and the devils, basically. And... To guard the prison, the kings themselves became tall standing rocks encircling the seal. They have guarded it for centuries to sh ensure that it will never be opened again. So this is implying that the seven standing stones are uh, kings who sacrifice themselves. And that this, the fall of Balin, tells us that the borrow itself, the, the, the grave, the grave mound itself is supposedly uh Balin's final Balin's head's final resting place there you Sank beneath the sea. Roar caused the tunnel roof to crack open and cold sea water surged up the tunnel. It doused him and smothered his fiery body and he turned to stone as his mouth burst through the forest floor. Yeah, see, today his body lays in slumber beneath Barrow Hill. The earth is still pierced by the teeth from his gaping mouth, and the spines on his back show through the surface. If you stand near the circle of teeth, you can hear the echoes of his dying roar. So this is interesting because it gives you, like, three different things. Three different stories about why the Barrow itself exists. I don't understand why he coughs. Anyway, uh, but if you recall, particularly here, this dates our borrow back to um, the Neolithic era and the Bronze Age. The Bronze Age. The Bronze Age. Sorry. Where we we encounter the Beaker people who are building, who are accredited with building this um, particular set of stones. So, right. So the the Beaker people are responsible for these stones here, and yet, come on, with the myths and legends of Barrow Hill, we learn that there's modern folklore around the borrow itself. So maybe I should run. I can watch that side from here. Now I can see you out there. What are you doing? I'm reading pamphlets, dude. And talking to the internet. It was him. Then they disturbed it. Him. Set something free. Put it all into motion. What I do kind of like about this is that it doesn't, like, as you'll see as we work through this, we're, we're not actually going to, like, have an answer to our story. Like, n anyway. Just keep in mind the myths and legends. Keep in mind the date of the actual site. And we'll keep on keeping on. Let's go talk to Bill before he has an absolute breakdown. What? What? What's that? Who oh, are you? You can't. There was... It wasn't there. But then it came up. 
I heard it. They were, and it, oh my God. <sighs> the power went. Then there was a huge surge and all the lights flared in the forecourt. I went into the kitchen, but it was too dark to see. When I came back out, it was, it was there, standing by the motel in the gloom. I couldn't light that stupid lantern anyway. You might need it if you're out there. With that thing, you'll be able to get about easier. If you can get it working. <sighs> Can't you hear it? Searching. What was it? They told me. Don't work up here. My mum, she said it was a bad place. Just stay away. Why didn't I listen? Those stupid old stories and the freaks that tell them. Maybe they were right. Stay away. Stay away from the barrow. <laughs> now, one of the things we have talked about... We're going to get away from him because he just mumbles. Oh, yeah, we didn't go over here. We'll look at that in a minute. I just don't want to listen to him while I'm trying to talk to you. There we go. All right, so one of the things we did talk about recently is the connection between the old world ways and folk horror. One of the things that is important to the recipe of folk horror is the old ways. So remember, we had all those myth and legends. We connected that back to the pagan um, ideas. That's what those two pamphlets, they, but they both had the same author, if you noticed. And those two pamphlets are there to help us link um, pagan, old world, old religion, old gods to the borrow itself and the myths and legends surrounding it. And then we've got uh, Bill back there freaking out because that's what you do. Uh, but, you know, he keeps saying, oh, those freaks that pra that, that talk about the uh, the myths and legends that talk about the old stories. Like he specifically said, the freaks. Now, what we're doing is we're othering uh, the people that believe in and practice whatever old religion is attached to the Barrow Hill. And so because of that, we're setting up the idea that these practices are old and forgotten and only a select few remember. And so now, again, another major element of folk horror is now we as the outsider, because there's always an outsider and they're usually the, the perspective that the story is being told from. So we are that outside observer now. We are now basically going to be pressed... We are now going to be guided through this ritual that has to happen or else we're all going to die. Which is, you know, that's that's the theme of folk horror. Uh, so now we get to explore the story. And the way that we're going to explore the story, as you notice, is we are going to interact with a variety of objects. Never did figure out what I could do with that. Uh, and the lights don't work. Beautiful sunflowers. There's a lot in this game that I would classify as a red herring. I am not going to lie to you. That is one of my absolute favorite parts of this game. I think it's Worcestershire sauce. I don't know. I don't know. What, what do British people eat? What do Cornwall people eat? And right, we see the car and everything. Uh, and remember, he was saying, you know, I saw them pull up. This was them. Uh, this was where he was sitting, clearly. So a lot of what this is doing is helping us corroborate the story. Menu. Pepper shaker. Oh, yeah. Pepper shaker of love. Oh, hey. Okay, so we can do something with this. I'm not actually as surprised as I'm sounding like I am. But yeah, I did kind of forget some of the steps. I'm not going to lie. All right, so there's a lot of information here. Like, remember I was talking about the Arthurian, Arthurian legends? Top fashions for the lady of today. Autumn sale. They look so 
Mo do, do, do people still wear these things? Anyway. Maybe this is trying to, like, date. It's not going to work real well. Ben! Oh, Ben! Ben, I'm sorry, I keep saying Bill. It's Ben. Ben, thank you for the flowers you left me. They were a lovely surprise. Uh, crossword puzzle. I was really excited about the crossword puzzle. Uh, and maybe I'll take a screenshot of this and actually try to work the crossword puzzle. That might be kind of fun. Negative answer. Five down. No. Celtic word or for singular standing stone. Ah, oh, I feel like I should know that. Megalith? A M E Meg O L I T H. Yeah, Megalith. I don't know what these mean. Does that mean it crosses before? Oh, six letters. I R genius. Old Norse for poet. Skull. Eight down. S K A L D. Scald. All right, and then we've got the story by Judy Peel in the Cornish Monthly, September, page twenty-six. Just in case you didn't know, we were in September. We're in September specifically. There's a specific date. Points to you if you can guess it before I get to this point. Uh, and this is talking about the Arthurian legend and how that's really kind of connected to Cornwall. It's kind of Cornwall's thing. And it also connects this kind of a legend and Cornwall to the megaliths and the whole concept of mythic time and deep time. It's a really interesting way that they're doing this through these articles and the postcards and all of that stuff is it's getting across some really interesting archaeological concepts about uh, myth and history and folklore that are kind of hard to explain if you just sit down and like explain to me mythic time well arthurian legends and those myths and legends about uh the borrow hill those are mythic time it's time that's been forgotten like the real purpose of the borrow has been forgotten because the people that created it aren't here uh, or, and they didn't pass that knowledge down. So, and they obviously didn't record it in any way that we're familiar with reading or interacting with at this point. I'm not saying it can't happen in the future. I'm just saying where we're at right now. But what happens when something gets forgotten by local groups is stories come up to be made about them. And so to explain the borrow, the rocks on Borrow Hill, the megaliths, there's three different legends there. One of them is that there are seven kings standing guard. Um, another one is that there are seven guardian stones watching over what, a single king's burial tomb. Uh, and the third legend was they're the teeth of the devil who got encapsulated, uh, I guess. That one's the kind of the hardest one to kind of break through. Um... And really what this article is doing is just kind of tying all of that together, all the folklore and the mythic time together. Um, Merrill's wants you to know that smoking kills. More Worcestershire? Fish sauce? I don't know. Ketchup. I want to squirt it. Somebody smokes. I'm guessing it's Ben. Because there are cigarettes all over the damn place. Ben's energy drink. Ben's sandwich. Ben's pin. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. We can look at these paintings. Cheese and a bowl. I love the shadow. Alright. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. 
Barrow Hill Service Station. Menu. New Continental Corner. Lasagna and Salad Garni. What's a Salad Garni? Chicken curry and rice and naan. And chutney. Ooh, man, that sounds good. <laughs> Burger a la fromage. Cheeseburger and chips. <laughs> Never was a chicken Kiev fan. More things we can interact with. Kind of. That's right, I gotta go out here, turn around, click this way, turn around again. Yeah, Ben, sorry, that's Ben in there freaking out. And then there's Carol and Maggie. Apparently they're having a rash of forged dollar bills. Ten dollar, ten pound bills? Is the note blurred? Does the note feel thin or fat? Is the note blank? What? Is the note rectangular as opposed to oblong? Babs cabs. Oh. Please tidy up. Please have a tidy up and vacuum this evening. Well, that's not going to happen. Also, we're not allowed to listen to the radio too loud because Mr. Morse, this is important, Mr. Morse, doesn't like the sound. So poor Ben, he's here all by himself. Maggie and Carol totally picked the right day to call in. Cover your role on the pumps. I don't remember seeing a third. Ugh. 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 Here's our infamous radio. The radio is a lot of fun. It's also a major part of the story, so. Cool jazz. Hey, Bob! You're looking good these days. My hair is starting to thin. Works tight to not cold up with you. Well, Jim. It's all down to my new shampoo. It brings my hair back to life and makes me feel more youthful. Wow! How does it do that? It's marine enriched, reviving my hair's life vitality with organic fish oils. It's a natural restoring hair tonic from Aqua Sensations. I'll have to get some myself. What's it called again? Omega-3 Regeneration. With Omega-3 Regeneration, you'll soon be looking and feeling 20 years younger. You should 20 see what it's years done to my younger. There's a place for you at Soul Pipe Bingo. Games start every half hour and fantastic prizes await you. Membership entrance mm -hmm. gets you. Soul Pipe Bingo Club. You never leave any handed. <laughs> Great day out for the entire family awaits you. Everybody will find an interest at Antiques Adventureland. The tea rooms open every day of the week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have you tried the latest in dental care products? Why not pick up a tube of ginger toothpaste? It's guaranteed to freshen your breath, fight pluck, and tooth decay like no other leading brand. And whilst doing all that, it whitens your yellowing teeth, unlike other market products available. Try Ginger Toothpaste, the ultimate dental product. Subject to confirmation, not to be used at high altitudes or a substitute for lubricant, may contain it's us. Just... For any occasion, any time of the year, there is nothing better than beautiful bouquet arrangements and freshly cut boots from Patsy's Flowers, your local delivery florist. Come along and join us all at the newly refurbished Celtic Corner, with our extended range of voodoo, necromancer, and mediumship accessories, and of course, the latest in witchcraft fashions. Why not pop along to our stall in St. Orfold and pick up a perfect gift to you or a loved one? 
And if you're really good, we'll let you have one of our special gulali, Celtic Corner, catering for all your mystic and spiritual desires. Join Tiny Cow down at the self-service carrot farm. Pick your favorite fruit vegetables fresh from the earth. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I really just wanted you guys to hear the the one about the necromancy needs. Cancer. Refuse to compromise this week. Even if family and friends threaten to alter your chosen path, they'll be the first to thank you later. When they witness your clear-cut judgment, winning the argument in the coming months. Capricorn. No one can accuse you of not trying this week, as you seem to be busier than ever, both at home and work. Fulfillment is another matter, though, and you'll begin to question whether this whirlwind lifestyle is what you desire in the long term. You're listening to 1224, your astrological guide on the air, every hour, every day. And this is Emma Harry, back on the air again after that power cut. I'll be your nightlight till around about one o'clock, so long as we don't have any more power ups. I've braved outside to fire up the generator and I'm up and running under my own steam. High tonight at the BHR station, alone here on Barrow Hill. Though I could swear I saw someone up here with me a moment ago. With a little bit less daylight this time of year, you can imagine anything in that ever-increasing darkness. Why not give me a call and say hello on 585? And in case you've forgotten, it's the the autumn equinox, the beginning of autumn. Or for those from across the pond, the beginning of fall. And while the daylight hours are dwindling, there's a harvest festival celebration tomorrow down by the harbour. But if you're so excited you can't sleep, well, stay up with me and I'll figure out some way to keep you occupied. All right, we leave the radio on too. Jam. It's better than the background noise. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Right, anyway. Also, an undercooked egg could be murder. Do not kill your customers. Hey, a basket. Oxtail soup and a variety of peeled potatoes, infant peas, I think that says. There you go. Yeah, that's infant peas. Marinated. Why do you need to marinate peas? Finest sandstone kitchenware egg cups. Yay! Oh no! Dos car. There's a jeep. Ancient Stones of Cornwall. I think these are all actual locations. And again, this is the inspiration that went into the borrow. To the game. Not fun. I wonder why they did take the time to carve a hole through the stones. Random person. So what this is showing us is that there was a borrow excavation. Now remember I said that there is something to do with archaeology in here. And now we get to be introduced to Conrad Morris, who we met earlier as the gentleman who wants us to leave the radio turned off. Ha <laughs> ha! Fool! We left it on. Um, anyway, so he is apparently a noted archaeologist, a professor, and a gentleman. And has surprised archaeology circles after gaining permission to dig on Barrow Hill. Uh, so apparently digging up here has been a no-no for a certain amount of time, and somehow Conrad Morris has managed to get permission to dig up on this particular borrow. 
Um, we also learn about... Yeah, we hear more about the, the legends of the stones, you know, the ancient Cornish kings. Uh, locals avoiding the area. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, and the stories have since become part of local folklore, and the area only raised its head from myth and legend when a telecommunications mobile mast was installed near behind the service station. Uh, ah, here we go. The existing archaeological information available on Barrow Hill is due to the work of the missing Professor Amelia Rumford. Notes, sketches, and surveys and studies were found abandoned in her satchel bag at the site. This further missing person only added to the folklore of demons and dangers at the ancient site. So we know that there was a prior excavation that happened, and it was led by Amelia Rumford. Um, and that Conrad is now picking up where she left off. If you didn't know, there's a place called Barrow Hill Radio that we've been listening to. <laughs> All right, and these... I don't know if we're supposed to know that these are pages from... Well, they're pages from somebody's journal. Let's leave it that way. Really? Now, remember, one of the things that is important to folk horror... The folk horror formula is again the old ways and an interloper then becoming entangled in those old ways so of course the quote-unquote locals already know what's going on or would already know what's going on and they're going to go do whatever but the horror aspect of folk in folk horror is the um bringing in of the outsider and the outsider then interacting with the unknown unknown to them, which represents the forgotten old ways. So what we're seeing here is, yes, we are the main character and we are providing that outside observer role. However, there were others before us who came. Uh, and this is one of those persons. His hunter approaches. My time is almost over. Uh, so they did open up the borrow, and we'll learn some more about that here in a little bit. Let me do the... Oh, there were two pages. Nope. I lied. Go away. Alright, so we've got this lump. Now remember, we've seen these lumps before. And this lump belongs to... Conrad Morris! Alas, poor Conrad. We didn't know you very well, Horatio. Alright, we've got this wrecked jeep. Though why it's wrecked, I have no idea. <laughs> Too far up. Ahoy, mateys! This is BHR. It's Emma Harry beaming a signal across the sea from the crew and a jolly sailor. Fishing 15 miles out tonight. Here's a warm hello and keep a watch out for any dark clouds heading in from the west. I haven't rechecked with the weatherman just yet, so I can't say for sure about that rain. But there's a bright moon in the sky and a gentle breeze. You can almost smell that equinox. <coughs> Quiet, please. I'm Emma Harry. And if you don't have anything to do right now, I'll be right here playing music all through the witching hour until about one o'clock. Winsy's here to keep me company, grinning like a Cheshire cat. And I'm here to keep you company. We've got a caller on the line. Hello, caller. Hello, you're live on air at BHR. Get away, get away. No, no, save me. You've got to get me out of here. I know this place. It's here. I saw it from the window. It got them and it's after me too. Then, it got all of them. We're the only ones left. You've got to run. Run, don't you see? Then, he woke something is up. that you? He's here and he's hungry. All those stories, they're all true. Are People you messing about? He's been taken for him. Taken to it by his own army. They could be anywhere. Anything. He controls it all. The Wh rocks, what's going on? Beating. I thought I was safe, but I'm not. It's only a matter of time. Get me out. Let me out. They won't hear me. That's uh, a little strange. I hope that was a joke. 
Oh, I'll try and give them a call back. If there are any other late night listeners who want to give me a call, the number, as always, is 585-21. I've got some more music for the rest of you and a few nice surprises coming up. Not least our usual book of bedtime. For those who need to catch up, the Mad Hatter expects you at the tea party. Before that, I'll be ready to check in with the weatherman. In the meantime, relax while I play these songs and messages. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he wrecked it into one of these standing stones. You know, normally that would... Look how hard he hit it. I guess. Or maybe that's how the truck's supposed to look? I don't know. Oh no, we're trapped. We can't get out. Oh no. No one saw that coming. Okay, seriously, we figured it out. Let me go. How do I get out of here? There we go. Do not eat the exhibit. The bread and eggs are at least two weeks old. Hmm. Hmm, I say. Hmm. Who was eating the exhibit? This is the uh, the Journal of Pete Aston. I think we already did this, but... Feel free to pause the game. Feel free to pause the game and uh, read these. Um, basically, it's Aston talking about being hired by Conrad and Conrad's timetable. And the, the preliminary work that Conrad did, which is actually kind of nice. I like seeing this journal. Uh, it's cool, actually. I like that there is um, talk about pre-digging uh, with the geophysics. They actually did a really good job of describing geophysics. Uh, we've finally begun digging. Uh, they talk about setting out different types of... They call them trenches here in the game. Keeping in mind that the game is uh, happening in not America. What they're calling a trench, I think we'd, we'd call a unit. I'm guessing, just judging by this. Um, anyway, pits. He's calling them pits. But yeah, pits, units, yeah, they're all effectively the same thing. Just depends on where you are, who's leading the dig, and blah, blah, blah. Trenches are pretty universal, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but here he's talking about how they're digging a pit, or they're digging a unit in front of each one of the standing stones. And how in front of each one of the standing stones, they're finding either a complete pot or evidence of a pot. Uh, he's also talking about, you know, him interacting with the people here at the service station where they're staying. The motel is part of the service station. It's like the only structure out here. Um, I don't know where he's getting these little sketchy sketches from that he's putting in here. Talking about how Conrad's getting weird. Because of course he is. That's the mystery. We're also talking about how apparently uh, Conrad has his own GPS unit, which I think we'll find here in a second. And I think Conrad talks about the fact that it doesn't work either. So they, they never are able to get this GPS unit to work. Um, we've heard from the lab and our dig finds have arrived. I'm surprised to read who is working. We have a misconnection with between Peter and Lucy. Ah, so that's why there's crap in the... So they're using the spare room, room number one, which we don't have a key for yet. Oh, shit. And I forgot the key to get into this room. It changes every time you play the game. Uh, tomorrow we will begin phase two. Now, September 19th is the day before the solstice. This is an important date. This is a lovely picture of Santa Annika as well. Uh, we will begin phase two of the dig. We're going to start first light and give ourselves a longer day. The aim is to authenticate and perhaps date the borrow itself. Exciting times. Okay, so they're the day... Uh, 
bound to be busy over the coming weeks. The dig has been an adventure. Phase two will take it to a whole new level. Alright, so that's the last entry, is them putting the, I guess, putting the trench into the actual borrow. And we got some sketches here. Santa Annika's well. A missing shoe. Did I put the phone on the charger yet? Some really neat maps. This is the map of the whole area, which comes in handy, actually. Because I got lost a lot. So this is the trench that they put in. And we'll go find that in a minute. Wait, no, that's what I wanted. Ah. Uh, stop it. There we go. All right. I think we can go into his room. I think his room locks on the PDA. So we get these cool remote views of, there's the trench and the stones. Okay. I've never known anybody to do this. He put up security cameras basically so that he could keep an eye on the, um, the site when he wasn't there. This is Conrad's PDA. With a Bluetooth connection. It's a fancy PDA. I don't think, I don't know. Anyway, um, you can look at the different cameras. That's the dig site. It's, that's the base camp. Uh, I don't think we've been up there yet. Let's see what else we got here. This is the walkway leading up to the site. I'm guessing that's the far side of the borrow? Yeah, so we've got two cameras on the borrow itself. One you can see the trench, one of them you can't. I think this is how you enter the promenade. Anyway. Uh, survey map. You can see that this is based on the original survey done by the Amelia Rumford lady who went missing. But it's nice to have a map, a handy map. And then... I'm not going to read this out loud too much. But this is him explaining why he put the cameras up. And that he's having weird dreams. Oh, and just for fun, his room key code. There is so much more I have to explain, but I'm not going to explain any of it here. All right, 336 is the number we need. Here we go. And into the room of a madman. So this is not our borrow. This is kind of one of the neat things in the game. These are sketches of other actual borrows that the game was kind of based on. Remember, I mentioned that there's a archaeological context to the game. This is kind of getting us into it. Um, that's it. I thought I could see the other one. All right, anyway, I get. So. Those were just some of the things that kind of inspired the game, which is kind of nice. I never really understand what these little symbols are supposed to mean, to be perfectly honest with you. But they sure repeat a lot. All right. So you notice we've been finding these pots, these bits and pieces of pots. And when we look at Pete Ashton's notes, they kind of start to make sense because he's got little sketches in there of the pieces that they're finding. I don't know what the tennis ball has to do with anything, but it's it's not an archaeological survey until you find a golf ball. I guess maybe in Britain it's not a survey until you find a tennis ball. These are soil core samples. Or maybe they're just soil samples. The way this one's kind of laid out kind of looks like the way you would do a core sample, but at the same time it could just be like 
low res dirt laying on its side. <laughs> anyway, we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got a sixth one in the back. We got some labels. This is all the closer you get to look at anything. Pretty sophisticated way of doing it, though. We don't do ours that way. That would make too much sense. Oh, poop sticks. I forgot he's got this locked. Um, Alright, anyway. Uh, so this is... This is some really cool information in here, actually. I'm really tickled by this. Also, it takes a while to get through this, so... If you want to speed through this part, I'm not going to blame you. However, I am going to tell you that you're going to miss all the fun archaeology. You miss fun archaeology, I guess is how I'm going to put it that way. Hang on, my mouse is dying. I need to plug in the battery. Bam! Magical mouse being charged. Alright, so first off we've got here... It's got a letter from Lucy Summers. Lucy is, of course, our lab lady who is doing all of our dirt sample analysis. Um, da, 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 da. Basically telling us, you know, she's happy to be working with us and blah. Anyway, she's also working us up for this butte. Yes, this game put an archaeological, a scientific archaeological report into it. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's, it's a very abbreviated chunk out of what would be a actual report. And on the one hand, I was like, oh man, that's cool! And then I realized I had to read the damn thing. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do this together. Uh, this is the prelim preliminary scientific report on the soil samples that have been sent, trenches 1 through 8, which would be, I do believe, um, well, we'll find out. I think it's all seven standing stones plus the trench itself. Anyway. Um, trenches 1 through 8. Yeah, see, this is where I'm like, I think they're calling trenches, what we would call a test bit is a trench for them. Anyway. So th this is actually, unfortunately, you can't really skip it, because there's a lot of information in here. Uh, so anyway, we've got uh, Trench 1, Finds, and Tray 1. I'm not reading these two. You, you guys can read them yourselves. Just pause it real quick. But what is important to know here is that the vessel was simply filled with oil. It actually doesn't give us any breakdown of what kind of oil, and it would have been able to get that kind of a breakdown that the level of analysis they're doing here, but, you know, for game purposes, it really doesn't matter. Um, but it does mention that it is filled with oil and that there is no indication of it being burned. Uh, so in the next trench, we find out that there appears to be a mix of blackberry, gooseberry, and pear. Interestingly, that there are twice as many blackberry seeds as there are others, indicating a measuring system in use. dun dun, dun. Um, we'll find this out later, what these two are, some of you may already know. But we do have a pot filled with bone fragments here. See, the paleobotany department was looking at this one, and it appears to contain a variety of seeds and spores. Things to keep in mind. Uh, trench 5 barley was in trench 5, let's see, and sodium chloride encrusted around the inside of the uncovered pottery fragments. Uh, trench 7. This one was a little difficult to kind of suss out what they're saying here, but... Yeah, it's something about clean, pure conditions. Exposed to moisture more so than the other findings. Eh. I feel like they were having a difficult way of saying this, and so they were just kind of throwing some shit at the wall to see if it stuck. That's not really... I don't know. I don't really think you can determine that. Uh, trench 8. I don't think I ever figured out what Trench 8 was supposed to be. Uh, 
those were our preliminary reports. And then there was a expanded thing on here. I don't know who Jenny is, but Jenny sent us an expanded report of the above seeds. Have found a large mass of fungal spores. As yet, their species is also identified, but due to the strata and the comp compact materials, the spores have come from material which was added at the same time at the seeds were crushed. Excuse me, crushed in the pot. So it gives us a little bit more of a breakdown of what was in pot seven. But why can't I have the dice? I want the dice. July 28th. Progress with the dig goes well, despite the recent arrival of protesters. They have been causing havoc in the night, stealing and breaking much of our equipment. Strangely, they decided not to touch the one already broken thing, that laughable GPS unit. <sighs> I have fixed up some wireless cameras, configured my PDA, allowing me to easily watch the dig site. Now that we have verified the stone has been standing for such a long time, I'm looking forward to uncovering what lies we've got. I hope you guys can hear that. This is Conrad's, uh, Conrad's voice. Quote, unquote. Conrad's low-tech, yo. It's alive and watching it sees all. <laughs> I went the wrong way, sorry guys. Centuries, waiting to be awoken once more to judge. A sentinel from ancient times. The stones are its guardians and protectors. The broken key, the seal I remove. Now the sentry begins the hunt. What have I done? What have I done? I am not gonna lie to you. I've already played this game once. I really think people are overreacting to everything that's going on. I awoke as if from a daydream. Yet it was nightmarish. In my hand were pages of gibberish, strange scribbled drawings. The stones called to me, yet I can't hear the words clearly. What is it they need? What offerings do they ask me to bring them? <laughs> Alright, are, are we putting things together here? Are things starting to click for everybody? What is going on? I found myself standing by the altar stone, pages of my study notes scattered around me, charred, ruined, how could this be? I no longer feel in my right mind. I have hidden one of the artifact fragments close by, under my own watchful gaze. Why am I compelled to do these things? What force is driving me? I feel as though I've lost control. I may know that the artifact's position before my mind fully cleared, and I forgot once more. September 21st. I returned to the trench in the barrow this evening, out of prime eyes of my sister. I knew today that we had excavated within layers of something. I dug further and found two artifact fragments in the bottom of the trench. And the voices, the voices of my nightmares, my mind. I have taken the artifacts, pieces of a seal, a key, and hidden them away. No one will fight now. <laughs> the guy thinks he's David Tennant or something. Scattered them. The voices told me no one will know what they are or where they came from. That nearby ruin continued to sink into the swamp. One of those artifacts would be very well hidden. <laughs> so that was the, the very forced process of Conrad going crazy. Close. Close. I've uncovered the seal. It is shattered in fragments. The whispers call me up the hill. So, what I don't understand... Ah, yes, see, this tells us if we can ever get the GPS. Have I, I have not picked up the GPS yet. Um, tells us the coordinates that we can find this piece that he hid somewhere in the service station. Um, if only I could understand what was needed. So, I, I hope you guys are starting to put together here from the information that we have what we need to do. It touched them and then they were gone. Absorbed. Disappeared. Torched to nothing. To nothing. The screams. I can still hear them. See their faces as they ran towards the cafe. Just after Conrad sped away in his jeep. That wasn't like him. He must have seen it. A sentry. 
a scout, a hunter, lashing out for its master, like being chased down by a dog, as if we were the trespassers. It won't get me in here. It won't find me now. You should hide too. You can't come in here. I'm not opening this door for anyone. Take this. You need to get into the empty room. No one's in number one. I've not seen anyone else, but you. Alright. Now we have our number to room one. Now go! Go and hide before you lure it in here. Get it. It's okay if you don't know what he's talking about because... There's absolutely no way for you to ever really figure it out. Alright, more pots. I don't really know why they keep showing us the pots. You can't do anything with the pots. I guess it's just to be like, hey look, there's pots. There's the Jeepus. I guess I would like you. So that's just the GPS unit. This, uh, this part here actually is the uh, antenna part. It actually helps boost the accuracy of the GPS unit. We don't get to take that with us, we just get to look at it. Because what we're going to do is use it to break into this. We took everything. Right. Really? An only take or some, like, coins? I mean, what about that? What if I want money? You don't know me. I could be a poor beggar. I could be some kind of like grifter or something. I don't even know what I am. We can't go get those until we have lights. Those are the ones we actually want. Yay! Remember, boys and girls, do not eat mushrooms you find in the woods unless you are 100% sure they're edible. And I mean 100% sure. Remember, poisonous mushrooms are what killed the Buddha. Ah, yes. Wait. Apparently, the protesters got turned to ash piles, too. There's like a little sub-story going on with the protesters here. Their heart's in the right place. Yeah, see, there's the rest of our missing protesters. There we go. Alright, so here is our approach to the borrow. Ah, yes, and this scene. Are you ready for the big reveal? Ba -ba! All right, we we don't want to touch this thing. <laughs> Right. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the whole game, is Santa Annika's well. Isn't this gorgeous? This is just pretty. And this is, uh, if you've ever done anything like um, geocaching, sometimes places have uh, little notebooks and stuff to actually fill in. The point of geocaching is to say, I was here, not to actually do anything. I enjoy it. Uh, so these are just people who have come to visit. Oh my god, who have come to visit the place. You will recognize some names like our dear Emma Harry. Harry. Maggie, who works in the cafe. Elsie Prestige is the one that wrote all of our little um, pamphlets that we read. Derek and Sam are apparently both going crazy. Carol thinks this place is disgusting. Pete Anston, of course, our archaeologist. 
Alright, and so this is where we have some important information. About collecting holy water, and then a picture, of course, of the appropriate stone. Elsie Prestige, again, our resident Wiccan, or whatever they want to be called. And I don't know if she's a Wiccan, I don't know, I'm just making assumptions. Looking at some stuff. Alright, now we are inside the actual well. Some kick ass roots. We can interact with both these and the thing. We've got some neat artwork going on here. I don't really know what this was ever supposed to tie into. I said it is not uncommon to find sacred wells such as this with markings on the walls. Again, this is a man-made structure here. We've got a thing and something that we can do with the thing. We've got this doodad down here. Uh, yep. Alright, so... To hold off suspension further since we're here. Oh, yeah, I haven't revealed that yet, but you know what? Screw it. I don't care. Oh, it's not going to let me interact with them yet. Yeah, well, there it goes. As above, so below. And there you have it. We have our first offering. Now, remember there was a story, uh, a subplot, there we go, of the, um, the, um, yes, protesters. Protesters protesting the dig. Well, remember they were, like, destroying all the, the stuff and, in general, being a nuisance. Ooh, a hammer. Can I have the hammer? No. But you can look at the hammer. No! There's no way to avoid falling through the floor. Why? Alright, so here's more evidence that these guys were the protesters, lots of tinned meats. You know, I never tried to turn that on. Looks like it is burning, though. A camera here. For those of us who remember cameras. No, oh, I wanted to look at the pictures. That's right, I gotta, like, toggle through them. I don't know. Somebody's eye. They're on a train. There's said train. Bye, train! I don't know who's taking these pictures, but they're not very good at it. A tree, a cow. There's our walkway. There's random person. I don't know. A chicken. The countryside. A really pretty pathway in the fall. <sighs> Ruins? Ah, oh, Santa Ica as well. Ivy? More trees in the fall. S holly berries? I don't know. Why would you take that picture? And we're back to the beginning. Okay. 
I still to this day do not know what that was supposed to be showing us. We can look at these flyers, they're gonna tell us the same thing. Uh, no, we cannot get into the backpack, because that would make sense. Anybody who's ever had one of these sighting compasses knows that they're a pain in the ass. But the point is, is we're supposed to see that the needle's spinning. I don't know what this is for. Oh, time's going backwards. Gotcha. Okay. There's these. I can see all the pretty little steamy stones. Aren't you terrified? There's the hammer stone. And the other one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. For some reason that's spooky. And this is Trevor Spencer's journal. Where Trevor Spencer lets us know what he thinks about all these esteemed archaeologists. And is basically admitting to vandalism and <laughs> obstructing the dig. Basically he's just been watching Conrad. And we get to hear about acorns. Kids, hey look, an acorn. Hey look, my basket. I must have been meant to pick it up. So here's those ruins he was talking about. And here's a thing. Hey, I wonder if that's the radio station. And look, there's, this is our motif here, is these guys. When all else fails, use your trowel. That's all I've learned from this game. Remember we were talking about fish earlier? This one took me freaking ever. So apparently, apparently since we can't possibly go into the back of the shop here and actually get fish from the freezer, we have to use the Omega-3 Enriched Regeneration Shampoo because Omega-3s usually come from fish. Personally, I think that's dumb. Only the best for last. Let's just let's watch that again, my friends. Like the car just pulls up, and they're just like, "Oh, okay, let's get." Oh God, there's the ah ah! Like she even looked like she jumped into it. Seriously. All right. Anyway. So all right. Now, another fun thing we can do, because we have the bits and bobs, is we, if you recall, from Conrad's notes, I think it was Conrad's notes, that he mentioned that there were carvings on these stones that did not seem, they seemed to be too weathered to be read. I, I don't know how in God's name you would have put this together any other way, but they're not actually too faded. 
it was actually four different stones that were required to create the whole picture. Now we have our picture. All right. I don't think... Yeah, this is the first time you guys get to see the dig site. I really like the dig site. I think they did a good job of putting it together. I mean, here's here's your dirt pile. There's the tent. Um, cake bake. A little bit more controversy on the dig. Does this one flip over? No. Just talking about Conrad and and the delicious mountain cakes. I wonder if I looked that up on the internet if there'd actually be a mountain cake. Uh, so these are measuring poles. I'm sure they get used for a variety of things, but they're actually for measuring. Um, each one of these is a meter, sometimes referred to as meter sticks. And they can come in a variety of different measurements too. Usually ours are a meter or a foot because we're American and we have to be contrary like that. But they're basically used to just kind of like quickly eyeball measure things. Um, I love, I love the sifting stand for long-term sifting. That's, that's awesome. Anyway. All right, so this is our first site of the actual borrow itself. So this, this tiny little bump here that I'm outlining, I hope you guys can see it with my mouse, is the borrow. And this is the primary ring of stones. Now the secondary ring of stones we've kept running into every time we've tried to leave. There's a bottom row of stones that actually go around this entire area including the service station and so everything inside of that secondary ring of stones we can't get out so this is some factual data about the borrow hill circle up here and yeah so she was talking about the stone row that leads this circle following an ancient track beginning at saint annick as well so just in case you were Confused about what you were supposed to be doing at any point in this game. Our job here is to... Let's go look at the bar first. Or the, the dig first. So now we actually get to use the trowel for what it's for. Oh hey look, it's a thing. Oh hey look, it matches up. And yes, you can put all the pieces in there, and it will end the game. You still die. So we're not we're not going to do that. All right. See, here's one of the measuring sticks. This is actually pretty well done with the strings. I wonder why we don't use those strings and the wire and the the stakes. We use nails for some reason. But if you were going to use geophysics out here, you wouldn't be able to have nails. Because they will set the uh, the geophysics off. Alright, I can't. I know it's turned around now. And I want to be over here. Ah, okay, we want to be with you. So, excuse me. We're going to start putting some of the offerings in. Just so I don't have as many to have to remember later. Because there are seven of them and it is hard to remember. Because I'm old. Alright, so. This is Baligo. This particular, I'm sure I'm butchering that. I don't speak Cornish. Is Cornish a language? What do they speak in Cornwall? Anyway. Oh god. Was that not the fish? Uh. Uh, 
right, so you got the double the double pleasure of seeing what happens when you put the wrong one on and what puts, what happens when you put the right one on. One of the other reasons I wanted to do this is because once you put them in the offering cups, a lot of these look alike and they're hard for me to distinguish because I'm old. <laughs> Uh, I will probably cut some of those just because it gets really repetitive. Run! Run! I have brought you a treat. Maybe. God damn it! Here we go. Right. On! Excellent. Now the trick with metal detectors is that they'll detect anything. Really. Now remember, Conrad did mention... I'm guessing this is Conrad writing this? Uh, cause Conrad's the one that buried that piece here, so I guess? But it... I don't know. It's just supposed to show how he's going nuts. You don't really hear much in the way of whispers. And I'll leave my critique for the game for the end. Baskets. I think we have everything we need. Yes! I was a little worried there that I didn't have the right mushroom for a minute. But why, Arky, you say, did you have all those other mushrooms if you didn't need them? Well, remember, my friends, I have mentioned on more than one occasion, this game has a lot of red herrings. All right. Now, remember from the report, it said that there was twice as many blackberries as everything else. I don't... I'm not 100% sure how you would accurately measure that. Honestly. I'm gonna go drop these off because I really don't want to have to come back to this stupid kitchen again. I hate coming into this kitchen. Excellent. Nah, can't screw it up now. It's the only offering we have. I'm basically just doing this part so you can see it. Uh, yes, this is the same sketch that's in the book up front. We got a lot of really cool stuff we can look at. Nothing we can actually use. Uh, I don't know if this is a page. I don't remember if this this must be a page from the um, priest's book from earlier that we found. Remember, um, because he's worried about being found out, being called a heretic for doing the devil's work by leaving these offerings at the seven stones. But this is like if you haven't figured it out by now, you know the seven offerings must be made to the stones. It pretty much solidifies you know what you're supposed to be doing at this point. <laughs> And then there's this 
Yeah, oh, Annika, Annika, from the bluest heights, descend to our brown, earthy soil. Bring your blessings of sacred water that we may grow again. And this is kind of important for later. So, um, words. He did mention this area. There's his notes. Again, you can just kind of pause and read these. They're just him losing his crap. No, oh, wait, what happened? There we are. And yeah, see, this is the part I don't get. I guess I just kind of put two and two together on this one, just kind of guessing, because why else would you have a headlight cover? You know? And it does kind of amplify this part, which again, there's no real explanation for this. But we do have a couple diagrams. Honestly, I do not feel like the game explained that well enough. Ah! Where am I? My cat's found my fork. Alright. In case you're wondering. These look familiar, don't they? Uh, and yes, there's one for each one of the offerings. I, I don't I don't understand this part. I mean it's cool. It looks cool. But I don't understand it. And see, so you can see the rest of the cups from here. And then right here, again, all of this was kind of trial and error, which isn't bad. There was no way for them to know that this was under here. And then you get this cool 3D Jedi Council effect. That's the guy that's been chasing us around this whole time. I don't fully know what happened here on Barrow Hill tonight. Something on my can in one moment vanished. Something ancient lay slumbering, forgotten. Watching, waiting. Something neglected to remember, to respect. I know it sounds completely crazy. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm sorry I couldn't help you. But I wasn't there. Understand? I have to stay here. If this has been anything but a nightmare. If we don't wake up safe in our beds, if we don't heal the wounds, it will come again. Keep a lookout into the darkness. It's well past the witching hour and time for me to sign off. So, until BHR comes back on the air, this has been Emma Harry, hoping you have a well-earned rest for the big green.
All right, and that's the game. Uh, I'm going to let it scroll through this. So, there's a lot of things going on in this game that I really enjoyed. Um, overall, the gameplay, I liked it. It was okay. I mean, we're just going to go straight into the gameplay part. I fucking hated the way I had to move around. <laughs> I think I complained about that enough. Um, there were some bits that I felt could have used more explanation, like the very, very end of it where you're trying to put the seal back together. So the seal was originally discovered in the trench, in that spot in the trench. But when you go to put it back, you're not actually putting it back on that spot. You actually fall through the trench and into the into the burrow. And then you're supposed to put it on top of that altar stone inside the burrow, which isn't where it was found. So that was kind of weird. Um, I also think it would have been a lot spookier if... There'd been some cutscenes where instead of just watching two people freak out, you were actually having moments of... Because all of the people in these stories were like, I'm having dreams and I'm hearing voices and that kind of stuff. I think some cutscenes for that would have been a lot more impactful as opposed to building suspense and horror. Which again, remember, this is a folk horror game. Uh, Story-wise, I think it was very effective. And I'm also really happy with the way that the archaeology was portrayed per se. I mean, yeah, because it's a folk horror story and because there's archaeologists involved, of course they had to have dug up some great awful evil because that's what archaeologists do. You know, when we're not robbing graves, we're awakening ancient evils and unleashing them upon the world. So, you know, that trope is going on here. Whatever. But because of the archaeology that had been done particularly by Conrad, uh, Conrad and Aston, you're able to reconstruct the ceremony that needs to happen in order to put everything back together. Everything except for the seal. If you hadn't read the reports for the soil analysis that Conrad had done from his archaeological dig, you would not have been able to figure out where the offerings, to which stones the offerings were supposed to go, except by just, you know, point and click trial and error. So there's that. Um, so I really liked that. I really liked the fact that we had to actually use the, the scientific and the archaeological report to figure out how the ceremony itself was performed. Um, a lot of the rest of the stuff you find out through documents and text so and artifacts themselves you know just the, the game items themselves so you need those things to tell you the story um, so it's a great way of using objects to create context that you can't have otherwise to play the story and solve the puzzle so as far as the portrayal of the archaeology I think was spot on um, you get to see what the archaeological site looks like. You get to see some notes about how they dug, all the preliminary stuff that they did before they even got to the site. You got to see some behind-the-scenes lab work results and how the lab worked. Um, you got to see some chatter back and forth between Aston and Conrad about being archaeologists and doing the archaeology and discussing how they were going to proceed with the site itself. Uh, I thought it was also interesting that you got to see some of the public opinion. There's very few sites, especially big sites like this, that don't have some kind of controversy around them. Uh, I mean, it's just the way it is. And it's not uncommon for big, important sites to have protesters as well. So those were both really interesting background pieces in the story about the archaeology that I really appreciated. Um, of course, we have the vanished archaeologist, but uh, other than the, the trope of the vanished archaeologist because the great evil has eaten her, uh, you know, we're using past archaeologists' report and studies in order to build on this next project. Very common, very important to do. 
So all in all, I think the archaeology in this game was actually pretty spot on, pretty good. I really enjoyed it. And overall, the game was okay. Uh, I don't- I wasn't particularly scared. That damn bird by the trash cans, though. The first time I played this through, I think I walked past it like three different times and it got me every freaking time. But that was literally the scariest thing in here for me. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm desensitized to this kind of stuff, I don't know. So, but anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed the playthrough. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my comments and analysis of the archaeology in the game. And yeah, I mean, there's other ways to... S there's, there's really not other ways to play the game. But there's a lot of other stuff that, since I've already done this... Well, this is the second time I've played through it now. Um, there's other things to explore in the game that we didn't take the time to do. So yeah, you should definitely go give it a shot if you want to play it. Maybe you're more susceptible to this kind of stuff and you can play it in a dark room with the surround sound and it'll freak you out more than it freaked me, but whatever. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and on to other things in our wonderful gaming con. So stick around on the Switch channel for more stuff.